What comes to mind when you think of home? Could be your favorite restaurant surrounded by friends. Maybe your favorite place to get away with family. Your house surrounded by your favorite people. Or the football field. This, this is my home. When it comes time for you to find yours, the only team I trust is Southeast Mortgage, the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs. You know, it's a great atmosphere. I thought uh, there were some lulls in the game at times and some sleepwalking through it, and uh, that always scares you. And I thought our fans kind of pushed us over the edge for some momentum um, there in the game. Um, Georgia Tech, Brent, a lot of credit to their staff. You know, they've got a staff that's <coughs> changed over and they've worked really hard this year at putting game plans together. And you can tell they've done a lot of work. They did a good job defensively. They did a good job offensively uh, with their game plan. They got a lot of respect for their staff and their players the way their players competed in the game. I thought special teams came through today, and it's the first game in quite a while that uh, we made some plays in special teams to kind of give us momentum and uh, get us rolling. Um, so proud of that. But uh, all in all, it's on to the next one. Um, great regular season for this group. Uh, they've done everything that we've asked them to do, and uh, they only get bigger from here. Was it a little emotional for you tonight to see these seniors take the field for the last time? Just all that you've been through. I don't know. I think I've been through more emotional ones than this one for some reason. This one just seems so uh, uh, fast um, and rushed. We were, we were trying to fly through there to get through them. We got started a little bit late as Tech got off the field a little later. And um, I have to catch myself from stopping and spending too much time because we start having memories of sitting in the home, convincing kids to come. You see. The, the, the first year, the second year you've had them, and now, uh, you know, this group's meant so much. I mean, look, is it 46 and 5, Claude? What's the number? 46 and 5. Yeah, this, this group's 46 and 5. How many games did we play COVID year? 10. 10. 10. We did get 10 because the bowl game. So we only got nine regular season games, right? And then the 10th was the bowl game. So we, we, we got shorted one game in a year that you were already shorted games, um, and they still came out the winning this group to ever do it. And it, you know, their leadership is our consistency. Meaning, everybody's like, well, how do y'all come out and do it each week and not let down and not do this? Well, their leadership is our consistency, and each and every one of them, from walk-ons to scholarship players, is deserving of uh, the recognition. Coach, could you speak to uh, getting everybody's best shot week in and week out, finish the year undefeated, you know, ahead of the game next week? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think everybody gets, I like think everybody gets our best shot week in and week out. You know, it's not like, you know, everybody's like, well, okay, you're the target, you're the hunted. I, I don't believe in all that. I, th I think that it's about us being the attacker, us being the aggressive. We probably didn't start as fast today as we have in the past, but you're not going to start every game, you know, just uh, guns a-blazing. And we had to respond to some adversity once again and, uh, you know, probably had, should have had a bigger lead at half, but the way things fell, it just didn't happen. And they actually did a good job shrinking the game as well. Uh, Vince Dooley tie, could you imagine coaching on the sideline in a tie like that? Well, I was going to and I chickened out because I didn't <laughs> want a distraction for the seniors. And uh, I didn't want all them saying, well, we don't change uniforms, why did you? So I decided to wear it to the press conference and things went well. Uh, but I told Derek, I asked Derek if I could, and Derek <coughs> and, and uh, Miss Barbara were both like, oh, we'd be honored to let you have this tie. And uh, this is the tie you wore for so many games. Uh, and, and Derek gave it to me. and. Um, I probably don't do the sweater and, and shirt the justice that he does, but uh, out of honor to him, no visor, and he did it. He did it. Uh, he did it right for a long time, and he meant so much to this community that it's just a small token of my appreciation for all the things he's done for University of Georgia and Athens. Kirby, you guys only gave up one yard of offense in that third quarter. Just what do you think of the defensive performance, particularly after halftime? Well, we, we played much better after the half. Um, we made some adjustments. They, they did a really nice job. I mean, look, I got a lot of respect for Chip Long, Brent Key, Jim Chaney. Those guys know football. They didn't, you know, they didn't just forget football. And not only do they know football, they know us. Um, and uh, uh, that part was good for us to make some adjustments and do some good things and, um, and come out and, and get our offense the ball back. When you have that slow start that you alluded to, I mean, how – fine is that line of kind of allowing that to fester or maybe even spin out of hand as opposed to what you guys were able to do in the second half? You know, I think it's sticking to the plan. It's going in not knowing what's going to happen. You know, we talk all the time about we're going to try to outscore our opponents in the fourth quarter and win the fourth quarter every game. 
So the first thing we go over when we come in next fall is how many fourth quarters did we win? Well, as you guys know, there's some fourth quarters that we're already ahead in. And it's like, does the fourth quarter matter? It matters at Georgia because it doesn't matter who's on the field. We want to try to outscore them in the fourth quarter. And um, that, that helps give you confidence that no matter what happens early, you're going to be okay. And you've got to keep chopping. And don't, don't hit any panic buttons. Don't ever do a good job. I mean, the more times we snap it, the more advantage we think we got. Kirby, it seems like Kenny McIntosh has been playing some of his best football over the past few games. Just in your opinion, what's been what's allowed him to be so good kind of going back to that fumble he's for? Well, he, he's been good all year. It's not like been a when he when he clicks the switch he flips the switch and really starts going and gets rhythm. He's got great vision, great hands, he's a weapon. Um, I hate that he's been through the year he got a little banged up. He's been beat up. He's had missed practices, he's had deep thigh bruise, um, off and he had two different ones. And so it's like, man. You know, can we can we can we lessen his load and lower the burden on him to try to keep him fresh? And that's been hard. Kirby, you say that the, uh, the game's going to keep getting bigger. Uh, how do you feel about your team heading into that construction? <coughs> well, I, I'm excited to see our team. You know, I think it's much easier to coach on a week like this week than it was a week like last week. You know, there's just um, it's different. You know, uh, nothing against Thanksgiving. It's not my favorite vacation. I like to eat, but it's it's, it's <laughs> tough because there's a different schedule. You know, there's a lot of variables that you can't control. And you know what? Brent Key can't control them either. So it's, it's not like I'm, I'm saying it's an unfair advantage, but you, you, you lose a routine as a coach, and it worries you a little bit. And uh, I like the routine that we keep the schools in uh, with, with our normal schedule. And I'm looking forward to see our guys prepare for, for LSU, who's got a really good, hot football team. Zion, Logan, Marvin Jones, both of the game, any updates on them and their status? Uh, not sure. Is there an area of the game you feel like you've seen the most amount of improvement since the beginning of the season? No, I don't know that I've seen. I mean, it's up and down, right? It's all relative to who you play against. So you can say, oh, they've gotten so good at this, and the next week it's not there. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a model of consistency and making sure you're good in every area you can be in. And there's no area that we can't improve on. I mean, let's be honest. We, we, we've got a lot of areas we need to improve on. Can you recall, I think it was you told us before the night of the national championship game or somewhere before, that you ran into Coach Dooley on the elevator <laughs> right before that. Can you retell that story right fast? Yeah, I talked about it the other night at his, uh, his event. But he was, you know, he, he was, when I got off on the whatever floor it was in Indianapolis, 15, 16 floor, thing deemed. I was tired. I had my briefcase bag, and I was by myself headed to my room. And he was sitting uh, right dead in front of the elevator, like, sitting there. And I was like, what? what? This is strange. Like, is he, why, is he, he, why is he sitting here? Um, and he was waiting on his uh, son to come back up with a key. So we shared a couple minute moments. And I kind of waited on his son to come back up with a key and just thought, God put him here, so uh, I should talk to him, see what's going on. And uh, I just thought it was a sign <laughs> before uh, the game. But looking back now, it's not about that game, just about spending time with someone with that much wisdom and uh, just thought it was interesting that he was there that night. What happens now with the tie? Does it go back to go back to Derek, man? <laughs> or to, to the dude. Daniel uh, and Derek got it for us and I don't know what they'll do with this this tie's got a lot of victories under his belt. No, I know that. They won a lot of football games. Claude probably was here for every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> lesson that you may have taken from Coach Dooley or you know, one specific thing? Just honor and dignity that, that, he, that he represented this place with. Um, I always <coughs> want to leave it better than you found it. And uh, he did that to like to a degree that's unmatched. I mean, he, he came in when this place was really down. He really put this place on the map and laid a foundation for all of us coaches that have followed him. Uh, and he did it with class and dignity. And, he always won with that, and he always lost with that, and he always represented the University of Georgia the right way. Just such a kind, uh, knowledgeable man. Here it seemed like after a couple of missed opportunities earlier by Keeley, he kind of settled in as that game went on. Just what did you make of how he was able to kind of bounce back? He made some good plays, and he, you know, he made some some tough plays. He got targeted a lot. You know, he uh, I, I have to go back and watch the the PIs. I, I can't really say. It was a couple of them on their sideline, bang bang plays. I mean. You feel like in our league they're going to let them play. And the PIs, the pass interferences were, were like their best conversions, you know. Um, but he made some nice plays where he turned back shoulder. 
Uh, he got a ball out over on our sideline, and uh, you know he continues to work. He understands playing out on that island, guys, is tough. You get targeted a lot out there. Stetson said, second. This was his second senior day today. Said he wasn't a big fan of it. What kind of impact has Stetson had on this program in his time here? Incredible impact. Uh, he's a leader. He's tough. A competitor. Um, he's just been around. It seems like forever now. And, uh, he's, he embodies our team with this competitive toughness. And, uh, he's got to keep doing the things he's doing for us to be successful. And, and we, we know we got to play better on really all three phases, better than we did today if we want to get where we want to go. Kirby, I know you guys got a lot of film study between now and SEC championship game, but just kind of thoughts on Brian Kelly, what, he, what he's been able to do at, at LSU. Yeah, he's an incredible coach. He's an incredible coach when he's at Notre Dame, and he's an incredible coach at, at LSU. Uh, and I know he came to this league because he wanted an opportunity to, to play the best, and uh, he wanted opportunities to go to um, playoffs and uh, win SEC championships. And uh, he's at a storied place that's got a lot of tradition and history. Following up on Stetson, a couple of players also said what you just said. He's the embodiment of what this program is about. What does it do for a team to have a player that is kind of universally regarded as representing all those values? It's great. It's just tremendous. And it's not. It's not Stetson, guys. This, this game is not about Stetson today. This game is not about me. This game is about the seniors. Look, that's that's part of the reason I didn't put this on because I didn't want the, the senior thing to be about that. I want I want the seniors to be appreciated for what they did. And I know he's part of that group. But there's really almost three classes within that group of seniors um, that, 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 look, they've been through some tough times, some great times, and uh, it's not easy to play at the University of Georgia and hold the standard that we hold it to every day of practice, and they've towed the line. One of your seniors that wasn't able to play, Nolan Smith, but he still made his impact made with the sideline warning. Uh, what does that say about his uh, passion? <laughs> well, they actually got all of us, so it, wouldn't be I think it looked like it was him, but there was all of us. And, and uh, you know, as long as he's excited, uh, I think I'd much rather have to coach the excitement out of him than into him. Kermit, you feel like the red zone offense or the offense today? Uh, I don't. You know, kind of indifferent. <laughs> there was times that I thought we did some good things. Uh, sometimes that the execution was there, and a, a poor decision by one or two players affected us. Um, but I was pleased with our field goal okay. How about a guy like Jack Pod Lesney? What has he meant? Obviously, you know, you called him, I think, Mr. Consistency the other day. But, you know, coming in today, he, you know, he hits two, 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 three or three. Just what has he meant to the program? Well, he's meant consistency. He's, he's insurance policy. You know, like when you play really good defense, your field goal kicker matters. You know, when, you, when your field goal kicker doesn't matter, when you don't play good defense, and all of a sudden you're having to score touchdowns, having to score touchdowns every time. And uh, Pod's given us that. that, that uh, Resiliency and really reliance. We've relied on him heavily in some, some tough moments. I'm thinking back to Missouri and uh, Kentucky, <laughs> he, did some, he did some good things today. Kirby, I know you don't pay any attention to college football playoff rankings, committee comments, and all that, but South Carolina knocks off Clemson today. What does that say about the league in terms of um, where it's at and maybe how it should compare when those final rankings come out? I don't know what that does. I know that, uh, that South Carolina is a really good football team. I mean, I got to watch them play <coughs> Tennessee last week. I mean, what they did is pretty incredible now. They scored how many possessions in a row. It's just crazy. And uh, that's hard to do on air. And they did it against the defense. <coughs> and they, uh, they're playing really good football right now. And Shane's doing a good job. So I, I know I don't need the college football playoff committee or any person to tell me what the SEC is like. Like I, was, I was born and raised in this, and, and I know how good it is. I know how physical it is. I know how hard it is to play in this league. Week in and week out, it's tough and physical. Now, everybody always wants a piece, and everybody wants some of the SEC because they talk about it, and they don't play in it year-round. So it's different when it comes to bowl season, and it's a one-game matchup. But if anybody wants an invitation, they can come play in this league. It's tough. Let's take two more questions. Coach, you guys seem to be running counter at a really high rate. I mean, is this something that's evolved as the season goes? You guys feel comfortable running it? We think some of our backs run it well. We think our offensive linemen run it well. It complements some of our play actions. Uh, it's a physical identity type run, and um, you know, a, lot of, a lot of defenses don't like, don't like playing it. It creates a lot of contact, and uh, the contact is what we're about. Let's say about this program when you have guys like Ladd, Brock, and Stetson, who maybe weren't super highly recruited, but now are doing what they're doing and performing well in the SEC Well, I think it just shows that we evaluate. Look, those three guys were all good football players 
in and of themselves. It didn't need, they don't need verification from a, a service to say they're good. You know, like, like they, they, they're not looking for that. They're looking for an opportunity to go play with teammates and they love football. And you wish you had more guys like that because for them it's not about their stats, their accolades, the wins and losses. It's just about the camaraderie and playing. And uh, that's what I love about all three of them. Thank Thanks, you. Guys.